Hello, my sweet summer children. I'm back with the juice to get you through the long night. I'm actually super, 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 super excited, and we are going to jump right into this video. This is for my A Song of Ice and Fire diehards, my Game of Thrones diehards. Let's get it. As all of you may have heard, the Blood Moon prequel was shelved. They saw the pilot, and they decided that they didn't like it, and they didn't want to order the series. But the real tea is that HBO has not just ordered a pilot for the Fire and Blood series. They actually ordered the series. They have have already ordered 10 episodes of the series and the series has a title and that title is House of the Dragon. So all of my Targaryen stands are where you at go in the comments and just like spam dragon emojis like dragon emoji it down fire and blood dragons and fire dragons and fire. So okay let me calm down. So news like this week news were in Game of Thrones. It was just coming in left and right like over the past week. Dan and Dave's interview came out and that was a, a complete shit show. I mean, the things that they said were infuriating. Like they, they were just infuriating. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Also, news came out that they had walked away from their Star Wars deal because they got a $200 million multi-year deal to produce exclusive Netflix content. Then the news came out that Blood Moon was canceled and everyone was like, boo-hoo, it's like canceled before it even started. And then boom, the news hit that there was a series order on the Fire and Blood prequel. So I reported in September that they were getting close to the pilot for the prequel and I had heard like under the table that they were actually filming the pilot. The way Game of Thrones news was just hitting left and right on Twitter. I, I just expect Winds of Winter to be in bookstores really soon. Like, I just feel like if George comes out and says Winds of Winter is finished, I have a publication date. Like, I mean, that's it. I, I'm I, that that would be it that would be all but I'm telling you when this news was hitting like I was hitting my inhaler I was shaking but let me tell you everything that we know so far so Tuesday night HBO tweeted the new series House of the Dragon is coming to HBO the series is co-created by George R. R. Martin and Ryan Condal Miguel Shapotnik will partner with Condal as a showrunner and will direct the pilot and the additional episodes Condal will be writing the series so before we crack too deep into what the series is about let's talk about when we can expect to see the series on our tv screens most of the information that I have comes from James Hibbert from Entertainment Weekly. I will link all of the articles that he writes. I mean, he's like a big titan for Game of Thrones insider news. So, boom. Apparently, this announcement was made to Warner Media Tuesday, and the focus seems to be like hyping up their HBO Max, which is a streaming service that they are launching in May 2020. So, I'm thinking that we might be getting House of the Dragon much sooner than we think. My hunch is we're going to get it May 2020 because why announce it while you're hyping up HBO Max, while you're hyping up the debut of this streaming service and the focus being around the launch of HBO Max. If they aren't trying to launch House of the Dragon around the same time, why even talk about it right now? Now, there are also some points that kind of want me to say maybe not so soon. So like during this time period, there were dragons. Not one dragon, not two dragons, not three dragons, but like anywhere from three to 22 dragons, depending on where we're going, where we're starting at. So there is this idea that CGI for dragons takes a long time to do and just post-production in general takes a while. But House of the Dragon isn't going to start with like big huge battles and dragons fighting dragons. It's likely going to start like Game of Thrones season one did with tons of character development and some OMG moments. So we didn't start getting really big and battly in Game of Thrones until season two of Game of Thrones, which is what I suspect for House of the Dragon. First, they want you to fall in love with the characters and build up 
to big shit. So 2020 is likely, but I don't work there, so it's just my opinion. Plus, they gotta go to all the party cities across the United States to get all them Targaryen male wigs. I mean, like, guys, let's just do lace fronts or nothing at all. Like, I wish you would just hire me as, like, a wig consultant and also a writer because I feel like there needs to be female writers in that writer's room. Anyways, I wasn't bummed about Blood Moon. I knew when they announced the Fire and Blood prequel immediately that it would be the more viable prequel a game of thrones prequel doesn't make sense without house targaryen it just doesn't but there is more to it that makes it more viable than blood moon and i'll get into it because it's not just about house targaryen so let's just clear the air there a little bit but first what is the prequel going to be covering i'm going to tell you I'm going to try. I really don't fucking know. No one knows. So there are conflicting reports. We know that it's covering Fire and Blood, but we don't know what part of Fire and Blood they're going to be starting at exactly. A lot of the reports said that the prequel would be the lead up to the Dance of Dragons. And George even went so far as to cite one of these reports back in September. And the report that he cited hinted at the Targaryen Civil War, the Dance of Dragons. I think the possibility is there to adapt not only the Dance of Dragons and the prelude to the Dance of Dragons, but the entire Fire and Blood series. I feel like they want longevity here, and Fire and Blood is hundreds and hundreds of years worth of history. So Fire and Blood is actually two volumes. Volume one is released. Volume 1 covers Aegon's conquest up into the reign of Aegon III. So it covers the Targaryens coming to Dragonstone, Aegon the Conqueror taking over Westeros, Aegon's rule, the rule of both his sons, Aenys and Maegor, the sons of the dragon, which is another story of its own. And we have Visenya and Rhaenys and Vagar and Balerion the Black Dread. And it covers Jaehaerys and good queen Alysanne, their children, the Dance of Dragons, which is a huge Targaryen civil war. And Volume 2 will cover all of the Blackfire rebellions, Aegon the Fifth, Baylor Breakspear, Sir Duncan the Tall, all of the mysteries at Summer Hall, all the way up until Robert's rebellion and Aerys's fall from the throne. So they could actually adapt this entire thing if they wanted to. So Casey Bloys said something and it kind of gave me hope that they might cover this entire thing. Casey Bloys is the programming director for HBO and he said, we look forward to exploring the origins of House Targaryen and the earlier days of Westeros along with Miguel, Ryan, and George. The origins of House Targaryen don't start at the Dance of Dragons. They start at Valyria and Aegon's conquest, like the book Fire and Blood. I actually think they are going to start way before the Dance of Dragons. If the Dance of Dragons is their end game, they need to at least start at the Great Council of 101, where they decide who would be Jaehaerys' heir, because that is one of the big things that lead to the Dance of Dragons. It's a huge piece of groundwork. It's decided in this council that a woman cannot inherit the throne over a man, even if by birthright she should. So I think they should at least start there, at the very least. I think they are going to start off slow, building up characters, and building up until they get big battle. There are, there are not going to be no big battles in season one. I think King Viserys needs to be built up. Prince Daemon Targaryen needs to be built up. And Daemon is going to have like some... It's Daemon is going to cause Twitter wars. I'm telling you. The dynamic between Viserys and Daemon, that needs to be explored. The queen that never was needs to be built up. House Valerian and the Sea Snake needs to be built up. There is also tons of written material on Jaehaerys and Queen Alysanne. All of these are useful things. All of this is backbone for them. All of this is interesting shit. And announcements, I will be doing a solo chapter by chapter analysis of fire and blood here on my channel during the long night we are going to be cracking deep into the characters and the exploring westeros 300 years before game of thrones and i'm gonna start in valyria i have a huge project that i'm doing on valyria 
But anyways, the reason I believe this prequel will resonate more with Game of Thrones fans over Blood Moon is because if you like House Targaryen, you're going to get House Targaryen. But you won't only get House Targaryen. You're going to get House Stark, House Lannister, House Tyrell, House Aaron, the Tullys, the Greyjoys, all the houses that you know and love were around back then. Whatever you liked about Game of Thrones is going to be present and represented in House of the Dragon. There will be mysteries and POVs and plots that we don't know is coming because Fire and Blood is a history book. It's not a novel told by the character's point of view like the TV series would be or the A Song of Ice and Fire novels are. It's actually a book that's told from the point of view of Septons and Maesters. There's very little dialogue. So while we may know some of the broad strokes, we don't know everything that's going to happen and George loves to add his mysteries. Like, if you like Dorn, Dorn's gonna be there. The Danes are gonna be there. All of these houses will be there. So don't feel like this is gonna be just uh, all about the Targaryens. While the Targaryens are gonna be in the forefront, much like Game of Thrones, other major players are gonna be on the board. I'm serious, like, I'm so excited. I just could, like, explode, literally. My only concern is the lack of women that are involved. I hope they bring women into the writer's room to help navigate, like, if they need navigating. There are some very strong female characters that I don't want to see crash and burn. I don't want to see the same mistakes that were made for Game of Thrones Season 8, and I don't expect to see them because Dan and Dave are not... A part of this. I also expect HBO is going to have to take the reins a little more on their series. No more con jobs from Dan and Dave. And if y'all want to get infuriated like I did and hear their interview, I'll link it below. It pissed me off so bad. They basically admitted that they didn't even try to understand the story and they wanted to take away fantasy elements because they wanted it to appeal to football players and moms like football players and moms wouldn't like fantasy I mean, seriously, like, I can't believe they said half of what they said. They basically admitted that they had no idea what they were doing. And they basically said that they conned HBO. I, you have to listen. Like, if, if you want to get upset, listen to it. I wish I didn't listen to it. I wish I didn't see that thread on Twitter. I wish I didn't see any of that, but I will link it for you below. Me personally, I'm through with them or talking about them. I'm like just done with it. Right now, it's all about House of the Dragons. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I can't wait to start covering it and covering chapter by chapter, fire and blood and character deep dives from fire and blood. I want to start with the sea snake, but first, Valyria. Are you excited? As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate you sticking with me through the long night. But we're back and we're out to kill it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the sweet summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day.